Hey, what's going on? Tyler Austin here, founder and CEO of REI Sift. And so uh, in this video, what I wanted to do, um, and what, what I wanted to do is, um, for, for those that don't know, you might not have seen, because you might not have been on the REI Sift's YouTube channel, um, but I run a software company that does about $3 million a year in revenue right now, um, projected to, to break $5 million this year, um, and we started uh, right about two years ago. And so as I've grown that company, one of the biggest things uh, that happens when you're having you know, fast growth is that things break really quickly. Um, you put something in place and then all of a sudden it breaks like you know, three or four months later um, because of the fact that uh, you might add new features or you might um, you know, uh, uh, bring in a certain amount of users and now you don't have enough pe you know, people in your company to maintain them really well. So you're always thinking about how can you like, get the most out of not only the people that you have in your company so you don't have to have a ton of overhead in people unless you're venture back, but we're bootstrapped. Um, or uh, you have to put like tools in place in order to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you uh, until it's the right time to do those hires, right? So for us, we prefer to hire in product first um, because we want to develop really good product. Um, but our values that we build everything off of is what we call the CPR method, uh, customer product revenue. And so our customers are our most important thing, getting feedback from the customers, understanding our customer needs. Um, but it can be really difficult um, when you're being pulled in a lot of different directions. So you need something to help with that. So what we did um, later last year is we ended up integrating with a full CRM called HubSpot, um, which uh, does a lot of that handholding for us, but there's a lot of stuff to do to get it set up. There's integrating with it at the API level. There's you know all the flows of the systems in your business. Um, and it could be overwhelming, especially if you've never done it before. Thankfully, HubSpot has really good consulting, stuff like that. And, and basically today, um, I have one of our consulting calls with HubSpot, but I have some homework that I needed to complete before that call. And I said to Mason, I was like, hey, let's real quick record this because I think it's, um, it could be very valuable to those who are um, essentially uh, trying to either build a company that's speaking to a bunch of customers or just in general trying to break down and think about um, how to handle or, or diagnose a problem you're having in your business. So with that being said, um, what I do whenever I'm like needing to kind of get my thoughts down is it's always typically with an iPad. Um, I use a uh, service here um, called Notability. Uh, that's the icon for it, Notability. So search the store for that. And what I do is I have these different, um, I don't know what you call them, uh, folders or whatever on the left-hand side. And I have one called Actively Working. And I create a new folder in there and I created one here called HubSpot User Flow. All right, um, so I do that. Typically, I get myself a tea, in this case, spearmint tea, uh, or peppermint rather, not spearmint. Spearmint would be weird. Um, but peppermint tea and, uh, and then I go to Spotify and I turn on, you know, typically like Spotify Lofi or something like that. Um, which we have turned down right now for the sake of you know the YouTube stuff. Okay, so after I do that, I have to start and figure out, okay, where, where is it that the very beginning of this needs to, to, um, to be and what is the very end? Um, and I create a sentence based around that. So what, like, what is my definition of completion? Um, and, and so for this, as an example, uh, my definition of completion, my doc, um, would be that um, a user enters REI SIFT ecosystem, and I actually write it down here, and turns into uh, X amount of LTV, lifetime value is what LTV stands for. Right, so a user enters an REI SIF ecosystem and turns into XLTV. Right, so that's like my definition of completion. So what I have to do now is I have to break that down to say, hey, well, how does a someone enter into our ecosystem? Like, what are the avenues that that's happening? Um, so, so uh, I'm just going to put a one here and then say avenues, and then I'll break that down. I'm not going to do that right now, but I break that down. 
Uh, and then number two, once they're in the avenues, what is the first interaction they're getting from us? Um, in, in some companies, they would call this like the, uh, custom, the journey mapping. What is the journey that the user or that the customer is having? For real estate companies, it's the same exact thing. If something, somebody enters into your ecosystem you know, as a, as a lead, what is, the, what is the journey they're experiencing through your business in order to have the experience of your brand, right? And so for, for us, you know, we have trials, we have, uh, you know, that the market, the top of funnel marketing aspects of things and then, and then enters into trial, right? So if I were to say, okay, the avenues would be like top of funnel, let's just keep it there for now, top of funnel marketing, uh, be it Facebook ads or whatever, what is that middle ground that happens? Well, we're gonna say trial, okay? Uh, and then to turn it into LTV, right? Now I have a conversion that has to happen. So uh, avenues into our, our, our brand, uh, which is top of funnel, enters into a trial, which then has a conversion, right? And then after conversion, now we need nurture, right? Um, and so now we wanna figure out, okay, once they convert into an actual customer's, customer of ours, how do we end up continuing to build that relationship to make sure it lasts for a long period of time, right? Um, so there's really those three, four avenues. And now that I understand that, right, I understand that, okay, well, my objective is, is to say, hey, I need a customer to come into our funnel. I need them to convert from a trial. I need to have that convert, that conversion, right? And I need to, I need to be able to nurture them for a period of time. Now we got to understand uh, if there's any difference between different customers, right? Um, so for example, we have three different plans, right? We have essentials, professional, business plan. Does it differ based off the plan? Does anybody in any of these stages have a different, should or do they have a different experience? For example, um, our annual plans don't have a trial, right? So if our annual plans don't have a trial, then that's something that needs to be thought about on how we're gonna handle that experience, that journey, um, which means that the conversion happens right away. It goes from top of funnel to conversion. And at that conversion, if you equal like our business plan or a professional annual, you're going to experience something different because you're getting that heightened level uh, of nurture. Um, and so that has to be thought about. So then we have to break that down. All right. Um, so basically, I, bite it, I break it down into these bite-sized chunks. And once I do that, now we're going to start at the very top. Okay, um, for example, the uh, trial, and we're gonna define what that trial is. So that trial for us is seven days, and we gotta be able to figure out, well, what typically do we want to happen? Okay, because remember, I'm trying to use HubSpot in order to make sure that um, we don't have to hire somebody and HubSpot can do some of the heavy lifting for us. So what do we want this seven day trial to do? We want it to, we, we, we want this, the individual to get the experience as if um, they under, we wanna get a conversion, right? So, so it needs to be over a seven day period, um, but we gotta understand like, what do they need to know or what do they need to understand uh, in that seven days to feel as though they should convert, right? And maybe, maybe there's a certain type of individual at the third day mark that we need to know that they exist so that we can personally reach out to them and try and convert them earlier, right? Um, so these are the things that we break down. I go one through seven and I'm just building, um, I'm just gonna build the roadmap and it's not gonna be pretty, it's just me chicken scratching, right? But you see I'm building my roadmap, definition of completion, my four avenues, right? And I'm just kind of writing down and just kind of building out uh, really this structure, trial for seven days and now that I have the trial, what if there's no annual? I'll put that over here. And then for my conversion, right, now I'm gonna put that down here. I'm gonna say, okay, conversion, right? And then I wanna know a percentage at that point. So I'm gonna put a, per, a percentage and put the question mark. Look, what is that? I already know what that is for us, but what is that? And that conversion now, after that conversion, we need to ask ourselves what's gonna happen. At that conversion period of time, whether it be an annual or it be because they converted on an essentials after seven days, were they active in the product over the course of that last seven days or were they not? If they weren't, okay, then we need to start giving them a activation type sequence to get them adopted because what we'll know will happen is if they don't get activated, let's say they, they forgot about the product and they, they ended up paying for the, you know, the first month and they still haven't used it yet, we know they're gonna churn. They're gonna, they're gonna leave our product after a certain period of time, right? So we don't want that to happen. So we gotta give them a specific type of email sequence. So there's the active conversion, 
and the more passive conversion. Okay, so those are going to have two different paths, right? Two different emails, right? That they that they receive. However, the initial few emails will be the same, like "Welcome to the community," yada yada yada. But then we're going to direct them because we need to understand based off what we know from the people who did convert that did use the product. If they were active, for example, when you look at the people who converted that were active. Okay, hey, that person was active during the trial. This is what they did. Now send the send whatever type of things they the active person did during trial. Let's send that how to the passive individuals to, so that they recognize, oh wow, I can do that. Because there's a reason why they weren't passive, why they became passive in the trial. And that's probably because they didn't they didn't understand what to do, or there was confusion there, or there just no adoption happened. So we want to send them an adoption. For the active individuals, we want to see what they're doing. We want to look at well, based off our customers that are our highest lifetime value customer, we want to start turning those individuals uh, into higher lifetime value customers. So that active is going to receive a different sequence. And, and either way, this is going to be a 90 day, 90 days. Okay. Meanwhile, there's people who didn't convert, right? People who just fell off entirely. Um, those individuals, we have to try to recapture at some point. They have to have another form of, hey, you know, we noticed that you didn't convert from the trial. Did you know REI SIP does this, does this, does this, right? Um, so we have to have that. But right now, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to let that drip off, and we're going to try to maintain the people who who are, um, you know, active and, and passive. All right. So at that point, now we got conversion, and and so now that conversion happens, we need the 90 days, but then we need nurture. So the point of the 90 days after the conversion happens is to make sure that they continue to use our product because we know that over the course of that next 90 days, if they do X, Y, or Z, then they're going to stay with us for 8, 9, 12, 2 years, and so on. Um, so that conversion happens, they get that 90 days. Some of those individuals, that 90 days might be just emails. It might be uh, if they're a business annual plan, that's an actual onboarding specialist helping them out. Who is that? What is that? And that's what we want to you know make sure we document. So, but now we got got nurture. So we're going to do nurture. And in nurture, there's a couple different things we got to think about. So nurturing them, uh, a customer in general, uh, is is much like uh, in the real estate space, lead you know management, right? It's okay. I see you're in my ecosystem, or where you're using our product. Maybe you're not using our product as often as we want. Uh, maybe uh, you've used. Um, you know, list stacking, but you've never done any. You've never created a task, right? It's understanding and looking at the the user base after that period of time to try to keep making sure that they're using your product, right? You want to make sure that they become super sticky uh, in your product, and and that if they're not using direct mail, for example, hey, did you know that we have direct mail, right? So that nurture is is a, is a little bit harder because you can customize it based off of um, account activity. Or you can make it relatively generic to where um, everybody is receiving the same emails for the most part, um, and it's really just keeping engagement, keeping you top of mind. A really good way to do nurture from the very beginning is through weekly summaries of your of, of accounts, right? Um, so something that a um, a mentor of mine told me uh, at one time is that you want to be able to speak to your customers without them being in your product. Right, so you essentially you want this offline experience, kind of like it, as it, if like it's it's as if you um, were to. I'm trying to think how to explain it. It's kind of like um, instead of you have some products that you buy solely online, right? Um, let's just let's just use um, let's use food as an example. A coffee is a better example. Coffee, you can go through the drive through. You can go physically inside. Right, um, but if you have like the app where you can order ahead of time, um, Starbucks, for example, might send you a notification uh, to say, "Hey, order ahead of time and you know get your coffee faster." Right, and so they're giving you that offline experience without physically being at Starbucks. They're giving you an offline experience, even though it's through your phone. It's an offline experience to bring you back into the store. Right, and so as a product. Um, you want to be able to do the same thing. So for us, for example, it might be something like um, a summary of you know your weekly activity. Like, hey, we noticed that you did three offers this week, but you still have 50 overdue tasks. 
come back and complete your task so that you can make more money. You know, something like that, right? So, so when you're thinking about your nurture, uh, you want to be able to think about what is the most important thing to the customer's business and how can we create, you know, this offline experience to be able to bring them back in the product or at least speak to somebody and keep them engaged because um, we don't want to have that drop off where they forget about you as a product, which ultimately means they were never adopted to begin with, right? Um, which means you might have to loop back around to that initial conversion stage and see maybe you need to tweak something there. All right, so for, so for under nurture, um, that's what I would end up doing is, is really putting this bullet points. And at minimum, you know, you want this to be a recurring. Um, so some of the things that, that will go under this is blog posts, right, blog nurtures, um, as you release things about product, uh, feature announcements, um, how to's. So this would be like customer support or, or uh, customer success team. Um, in addition to that, you would have um, um, you know offline experience. Make what I just talked about. And we'll leave it at that for now. Um, so now what I have to be able to do is I have to be able to break this down into, into actual actionable things, right? So what I've done so far, you know, is I've, I've defined again what my definition of completion is, uh, my avenues of, of my top of funnel, my trial, my conversions, my nurture. I've said, okay, trial is seven days. What's gonna happen on those seven days? We'll have to create that email sequence. If there's any things that come off of that, like after the third day, let's look for X, Y, and Z. I'll talk about that, that in a second. Then our actual conversion percentage, there's active you know, individuals in that conversion, meaning that um, they uh, you know, were using our product and then there's the passive ones where maybe they didn't log in after three days, but they still converted. We know that they'll probably fall off at a certain point if we don't give them the right message. And then we have the nurture recurring where it's like, okay, this is where we're sending out those blog posts, feature announcements, how to CSM, offline experience. And some of these, like the blog post nurtures, over the course of the 90 days after the conversion, they're probably still gonna be getting those emails, right? Um, but after that 90 days, you don't wanna swarm them with everything. You want them to really focus on this. You might not wanna do a bunch of how-to things, you know, random how-tos in your nurture that you would because you're gonna be focusing on the activation aspects of it during your conversion. So. Um, so those are the four things, but now what I have to do is I have to take this and I have to actually start breaking it down, uh, starting at the top of funnel aspect of things, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define, you know, what that means. So in a top of funnel, and I'm gonna switch colors here because I'm switching like um, uh, brain dump versus actual implementation, right? On things that need to be done. Um, so for top of funnel, Right now, we have challenges. Challenges and organic. Organic meaning we have blog posts that we're posting, people are finding us through YouTube and things like that, right? Um, so challenges and organic. Um, through that organic, um, you, we have uh, mat, like uh, we, what we would call like lead magnets, which is free downloadable free resources. Um, one being what we call our Sensei Flow, and the other one being our data flow. Okay, so with those now, um, what I like to do is I like to make it into more of like an actual breakdown of what needs to happen. So um, like little squares, um, they're ugly squares, but they're basically exactly what you would use like with lucid charts or something else. Um, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna draw my little square and then I'll always, once I get one that's good, I'll just copy it and then I'll just always just paste it when I want it, okay? And inside of that little square, right, I'm gonna say um, BLM for beacon lead magnet. So there's, that's a download, meaning, and I sometimes identify that with just like a down arrow, okay? So then this then is gonna go, once that downloads, we're gonna receive email. And this is an example of when I uh, paste that image back again. So email, okay, now on the side I can do some notes here. Uh, so Beacon Lead Mac email, so this is delivery. But then they're also gonna enter into our master list. 
and our uh, BLM list, Beacon League Magnet list, right? So we, we want to know like okay this so this is this is the email it's sending to say hey this is their 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 resource right being delivered and at that same time they're going to be added to the master list inside of HubSpot and the, the Beacon League magnet okay so at this moment they may or may not be a customer for us already we don't know that um, but that check has to happen All right so I'll take in red and I'll signify uh, in red that. Uh, we need to know is it a customer or isn't it a customer at this point? Uh, so I'll just do a simple is or isn't Right uh, meaning that there's two different there's a check. There's a there's a bowling that needs to happen Okay, they've downloaded this email. Uh, are they a customer with us already or are they not a customer with us already? Okay, um, if they are um, Then we want to Just give them the resource and then they're they should already be in another sequence if they aren't right then we need to make sure that they go through a flow to actually um, then start receiving, uh, you know, content from us. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say enter into uh, sales funnel. I'm going to keep this high level for right now. Sales funnel. Okay, and I'm going to now just break it down. And essentially, that sales funnel is them um, being sold our challenge, right? It's 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 whatever the pain point is that we're focusing on. They're, they download the Beacon League Magnet because we know that they're interested in something from one of our videos. Um, if they haven't taken the challenge yet, then we want to push them to the challenge because that's where we're going to try and get that trial, right? Um, so we're going to push ch challenge. And if any at any time this converts into a trial, then they enter into that trial email sequence. And then we're going to do a look at activity. And if they meet a certain metric, right? If they meet a metric of logged in three times in the first day, upload a list, or done this, right? I'm not gonna say what those are, but if they fit these three primary things in the first X days, right? Then we push them to be, um, to try to, to upgrade them into uh, the plan, right? To, say, to offer them a discount, right? Off an offer. We wanna try and push them to that annual plan, okay? So after that offer happens, is there a conversion or isn't there? Question mark. And if there is, then they go into 90 days. Okay, and after that 90 days, we gotta define what all that is for the next 90 days, that onboarding experience, um, and then so on, so on, so on. Right, so I know I'm chicken scratching it primarily because I have to hop on a, a, a call, but also because um, I just want you guys to really just see the flow of how things break down, you know, how I kind of, figure out, okay, this is my top, and then I break the, each of those down into their own little thing, right? And then I just start taking that and say, okay, starting with top of funnel, what is that? And then start building that out, really chicken scratchy, right? And, and, and then once I have an overarching, like, okay, this is that flow, now I'll take this and I'll actually start refining it and improving it and turning it into actually something that we can work with once we have it to where it's malleable and it, it seems concrete, then we take it and we build a project based off of it. Um, and we do that in Notion and then we attach all the resources to it. And then everybody gets given their respective roles in, in, in what they need to do to make this be executed. Um, and then we have to figure out, do we need any hires for this? When is this gonna be done by? And so on and so forth, which can be a whole separate video. But um, that's all I really wanted to show you guys. I, you know, again, I sat down, I was like, hey, this is um, something I feel like would be useful for maybe somebody who's trying to plan something out, um, uh, be it you know launching a course or whatever the scenario is. Um, you need an iPad, get yourself some uh, notability, uh, brain dump your definition of completion and work your way back from there. Start, middle, finish, um, however many steps it's gonna be. Break down each of those steps in their own thing uh, at a high level and then dig into each one again that much you know deeper. So you're starting high, breaking it apart, and then breaking apart again and breaking apart again. So by the time it's kind of like like a cookie crumb until you get down to a really granular end product that you can then you know convert into something that's 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 viable and useful. Um, so anyway, hopefully that helped somebody um, in general. Um, if not, sorry. If so, great. Uh, I think that this type of content would be useful for me when I you know was getting started and trying to figure out how I can piece things together. But um, don't forget the lofi music. It helps when you're actually doing it, the focus. But 
Appreciate it. Thank you. See you guys in the next one. Bye. This is something we can make like a little template of and put it in the description. Um, just uh, like possibly just rewrite like your bold points. Possibly, I'd have to turn it into an actual. I actually have like an executable document that I need to like make for so that I, it's repeatable even for myself. But yeah, we might be able to have a download. I need to hop in this uh, actual call that I'm doing this for.